The most primitive birds were recently descended from theropod dinosaurs, and they still had long thin theropod-like tails, a feature that is firmly established as present in Archaeopteryx. In Confuciusornis the tail has already disappeared and has been replaced by a pygostyle like those of modern birds. The pygostyle in modern forms is where the flight tail feathers that control steering and drag during flight are attached to the body, but even though Confuciusornis had a pygostyle, no tail flight feathers were present. Like modern birds, it had a toothless beak, but closer and later relatives of modern birds were toothed, indicating that the loss of teeth occurred convergently in Confuciusornis and living birds. It was thought to be the oldest known bird to have a beak. An interesting note about Protopteryx is that it is among the most primitive enantronothene birds known to live in the early Cretaceous. It was very small, only about 10 centimeters from head to tail. It was almost certainly flight capable, and likely flew amongst the trees in the dense forested areas of early Cretaceous China. The tail consisted of two long feathers which only had barbs at their tips. Closer to the body, the long tail feathers were thin and needle-like. Based on features present on the preserved skeleton of Sonornis, it shared similarity in flight performance and perching capabilities to sparrow-sized birds living today in arboreal habitats. Its thorax is strengthened to resist forces generated by an increase in pectoral muscle mass. It has a V-shaped ulnar in the wrist for articulation with the metacarpus which allowed greater flexion during upstroke, important in small-bodied flyers for decreasing drag. The presence of a fully opposable hallux with a particularly large ungual and the pedal claws being strongly recurved are indicators of an advanced perching function and shows that the bird lived primarily in an arboreal habitat. Living in Madagascar during the late Cretaceous, Falcatakli had claws on their wings and usually had toothy snouts instead of beaks, and many species also had ribbon-like display feathers on their tails instead of lift-generating fans. It had a long tall snout very similar in shape to a modern toucan, unlike any other known Mesozoic bird, with the surface texture of the bones indicating it was also covered by a keratinous beak. But despite this very modern face shape the bone arrangement was still much more similar to other enantronithians, there was a huge toothless maxilla making up the majority of the beak, with a small tooth-bearing premaxilla at the tip. This suggests that there was more than one potential way for early birds to evolve modern-style beaks, and there may have been much more diversity in these animals' facial structures than previously thought. Iberomasornis was quite small, no bigger than a large modern sparrow. It bore a single claw on each wing. Its ribcage was not strengthened by ossified uncinate processes but cartilaginous processes were likely present. The Las Hoyas site was once a forest surrounding a lake, the climate was warm with a distinct dry season. Since the skull is not known, the diet of Iberomasornis remains a subject of guesswork. It perhaps hunted insects and other small animals, plucking them out of the air or from the ground. It may have preferred to live near lakes, catching insects from the water's surface. The shorter tail and the higher position of the shoulder indicated by the strut-like coracoid, allowing for a greater wing amplitude, improved maneuverability, turning and swooping at speed. Longipteryx had a long snout tipped with a few hooked teeth and feet capable of perching, features that indicate it may have lived very similarly to modern kingfishers, feeding on fish and small invertebrates in its swampy forest habitat. The enantronithenes were a sort of cousin lineage to modern birds. Most had toothy jaws and clawed wings, and the wide variety in their skull shape suggests that they were specialized for many different dietary niches. The entire group went extinct during the Cretaceous mass extinction and left no living descendants, but during the Cretaceous they were the most widespread and diverse group of birds. The Patagopteryx had feet with fused bones, much like modern birds. The bird did not have a wishbone, meaning that it would have been impossible for it to have had the muscles necessary for flying. The legs had very short femurs, 
characteristic of a running animal. The second toe has a curved claw, but it does not appear to have been used as a weapon. It was omnivorous, and probably traveled in flocks across the plains of South America. It is the earliest known unequivocal example of secondary flightlessness, its skeleton shows clear indications that the ancestors of Patagopteryx were flying birds. Elsornis lived alongside famous dinosaurs like Velociraptor in what is now the Gobi Desert. Its wings and shoulder bones were very odd for an opposite bird, with proportions that don't match anything capable of competent flight. Instead Elsornis appears to have been a flightless Enantronithean, a representative of a previously unknown terrestrial lineage. Ichthyornis has been historically important in shedding light on bird evolution. It was the first known prehistoric bird relative preserved with teeth, and Charles Darwin noted its significance during the early years of the theory of evolution. Ichthyornis remains important today as it is one of the few Mesozoic-era ornithurans known from more than a few specimens. Ichthyornis was a sea bird that was probably very similar to modern gulls in terms of ecological niche. Rather than being a single sheet of keratin, the beak of Ichthyornis was composed of several segments that formed a whole, the beak of the albatross would be a modern analogy to this. Its teeth were laterally compressed and the tips were recurved so that they pointed towards the rear of the mouth. A key note about the teeth is that they were only present in the middle portion of the mouth, the front portion is completely lacking. The teeth themselves likely facilitated prey capture of marine organisms such as late Cretaceous fish that swam too close to the surface. Enantiophoenix was similar in size to a modern starling and although only known from a fragmentary fossil it had fairly chunky leg bones with large claws. It was probably a strong perchier like most other Avasaurid enantronithians. Several tiny pieces of amber were also found within the fossil, which have been suggested to be stomach contents. This could perhaps be evidence of enantiophoenix feeding on tree sap like modern sapsuckers, but without a known skull it's hard to tell for certain whether it was specialized for that sort of diet or not. 66 million years ago, the end Cretaceous mass extinction wiped out all dinosaurs except for the avian bird lineage. Living in northwest China during the mid-Paleocene, about 61 million years ago, Canornis was roughly pigeon-sized at around 30 centimeters long. It's known only from a few bones from its legs and feet, but those bones are unusual enough to hint that it might have been something very special. Uniquely for a Cenozoic bird, some of its foot bones weren't fully fused together. This sort of incomplete fusion is seen in both juvenile modern birds and in adults of non-avian ornithuran birds from the Cretaceous, and the Canorna specimen seems to have come from an adult animal. If it was fully grown with unfused feet, then that would suggest it was actually part of a relic lineage living 5 million years after the mass extinction, surviving for quite some time longer than previously thought. While it was excellently adapted to swimming and diving, Baptornis is thought to have been clumsy on land, pushing itself along the rocks with its feet rather than actually walking. The natural position of the lower legs was flush against the body, with the feet stretched out sideways and thus it would have been unable to move upright without toppling over. As opposed to Hesperornis which almost certainly had to slide on its belly or galumph like an earless seal, Baptornis's lower leg was not as firmly placed along the body sides. Thus, it would have found it easier to place its feet under its body with the toes pointing forwards and might have managed small hops or even an awkward waddle, body held low to the ground. Hesperornis was primarily marine, and lived in the waters of such contemporary shallow shelf seas as the Western Interior Seaway which then were subtropical to tropical waters, much warmer than today. Like loons, they were probably excellent foot-propelled divers, but might have been ungainly on land. Like loons, the legs were probably encased inside the body wall up to the ankle, causing the feet to jut out to the sides and near the tail. 
This would have prevented them from bringing the legs underneath the body to stand, or under the center of gravity to walk. Instead, they likely moved on land by pushing themselves along on their bellies, like modern seals. It also had both teeth and a beak in its jaws, although only the toothless tips would have actually been covered by a true keratinous beak. The Ibero-Armorican island was made up of most of the Iberian Peninsula and France and was larger than modern-day Madagascar. One of the residents of this island was the aptly named Gargantuavis, the largest known Mesozoic bird, and probably an example of island gigantism. Although only known from a few isolated bones, it's estimated to have been slightly larger than a modern cassowary. At that size it would have also been secondarily flightless, which is surprising for a bird that was living alongside larger fast-moving theropods like abelosaurs. Its hips were fairly broad, suggesting it wasn't capable of running very fast, and it was likely a slow-moving herbivore that was a fairly rare member of its ecosystem. The earliest fossils of the genus Struthio are from the early Miocene 21 million years ago of Namibia in Africa, so it is proposed that genus is of African origin. The ostrich holds the title for being the world's largest and heaviest living bird. Instead of flying, they are exceptionally fast runners and can reach speeds of up to 70 km per hour, making them the fastest running bird. They have powerful, long legs, each ending with two toes. The strong legs are adapted for running and are used for defense against predators. They are known for their nomadic lifestyle. They roam large distances in search of food and water. They are omnivores and are well adapted to their arid environments. They have large eyes, which are among the largest of any land animal. Their eyes are well adapted for detecting predators over long distances. Ostriches are social birds and often live in groups called flocks. When threatened, ostriches are known to use their powerful legs for defense. They can deliver a powerful kick that can be lethal to predators. Although Lothornis was able to fly well, their closest relatives are the extant tinamous. Its wing bones are similar to those of storks and vultures, meaning that unlike modern tinamous it was capable of soaring flight. In a study about ratite endocasts, Lothornis ranks among the taxa with well-developed olfactory lobes. This is consistent with a nocturnal, forest-dwelling lifestyle, though as much all volant birds it retains large optical lobes. Unlike modern tinamous, Lothornis has toe claws and reversed halluxes that allow for efficient perching. Adult greater rheas are large, flightless birds with a height ranging from 120 to 170 centimeters. They have long legs and necks, a small head with a crest of feathers, and a distinctive plumage that provides effective camouflage in their natural habitat. They are social birds that often form flocks, especially during the non-breeding season. These flocks can range in size from a few individuals to over 100 birds. Males can exhibit territorial behavior, especially during the breeding season, using vocalizations and displays to establish dominance and defend their territory. They have long legs with three toes on each foot, adapted for running in their grassland habitats. In some regions, greater rheas are kept in captivity for various purposes, including their meat, feathers, and leather. They have been domesticated in certain areas. While the great tinamou is a ground-dwelling bird, it is capable of short, burst flights. However, it prefers to run and hide rather than taking to the air when threatened. They are omnivores, feeding on a diet that includes fruits, 
seeds, insects, and small vertebrates. They use their strong legs and beaks to search for food on the forest floor. These birds are known for their secretive and elusive behavior. They are often more heard than seen, as they are skilled at avoiding detection in their dense forest environments. As ground-dwelling birds, they play a role in seed dispersal and insect control within their ecosystems. Giant moa has been described as a bird that was two-legged, tailless, wingless clad in woolly fibers. It had long, shaggy hair-like feathers up to 18 centimeters long. Feather and skin fragments indicate that all but the legs were fully feathered and that the wings of this bird were not visible. It displayed a large reversed sexual dimorphism whereby the females were much larger than males, estimated to have had up to twice the body mass of males. It was one of the largest herbivores in New Zealand's terrestrial ecosystem. The extinction of the moa occurred around the 15th century, 200 years after human settlement in New Zealand. Before the settlement of humans, it had few natural predators, meaning there was little threat that the species would become extinct. However, after the arrival of the Maori people and their human activities of hunting and fires, humans soon became a threat to all species of moa as it has been found that there did not appear to be a preferred moa size for hunting. Though geographically restricted to the North Island, the diversity of habitat that the moa could survive in has dismantled theories that its extinction could have been a result of habitat loss. The southern brown kiwi is native to New Zealand. It can be found in a variety of habitats, including forests, grasslands, and scrublands. They are relatively small, flightless birds. Its wings are small and not functional for flight, but it has strong legs and is a good runner. They are nocturnal birds, meaning they are most active during the night. They have a keen sense of smell and use their long bills to probe the ground in search of insects and invertebrates. They have unique, hair-like feathers that resemble mammalian fur. These feathers are soft and provide insulation, helping the bird maintain body temperature. Kiwis are known for laying very large eggs relative to their body size. The eggs can be up to 20% of the female's body weight, which is one of the largest egg-to-body weight ratios among birds. Their populations face threats from habitat loss, introduced predators, and human activities. Examination of brain endocasts has shown that elephant had greatly reduced optic lobes, similar to those of their closest living relatives, the kiwis, and consistent with a similar nocturnal lifestyle. It is possibly the largest bird to have ever lived, with their eggs being the largest known for any amniote. It is widely believed that the extinction of elephant birds was a result of human activity. Their closest living relatives are kiwi, suggesting that ratites did not diversify by vicariance during the breakup of Gondwana but instead convergently evolved flightlessness from ancestors that dispersed more recently by flying. The birds were initially widespread, occurring from the northern to the southern tip of Madagascar. The fossil record of casuariforms is interesting, but not very extensive regarding fossil species of Dromaeus and Casuarius. As with all ratites, there are several contested theories concerning their evolution and relationships. Some Australian fossils initially believed to be from emus were recognized to represent a distinct genus, Emuarius, which had a cassowary-like skull and femur and an emu-like lower leg and foot. Emus are soft-feathered, brown, flightless birds with long necks and legs, and can reach up to 1.9 meters in height. They can travel great distances, and when necessary can sprint at 50 kilometers per hour. They forage for a variety of plants and insects, but have been known to go for weeks without eating. They drink infrequently, 
but take in copious amounts of water when the opportunity arises. The early European settlers killed emus to provide food and use their fat for fueling lamps. They also tried to prevent them from interfering with farming or invading settlements in search of water during drought. An extreme example of this was the Emu War in Western Australia in 1932. Emus flocked to the Chandler and Walgolan area during a dry spell, damaging rabbit fencing and devastating crops. An attempt to drive them off was mounted, with the army called in to dispatch them with machine guns, the emus largely avoided the hunters. Emus are large, powerful birds, and their legs are among the strongest of any animal and powerful enough to tear down metal fencing. The birds are very defensive of their young, and there have been two documented cases of humans being attacked by emus. Southern cassowaries have a reputation for being dangerous to humans and animals, and are often regarded as aggressive. The birds can jump quite high and kick powerfully with their blade-like claws. However, deadly encounters with southern cassowaries are rare. They forage on the forest floor for fallen fruit and are capable of safely digesting some fruits toxic to other animals. They also eat fungi, and some insects and small vertebrates. The plumage is sexually monomorphic, but the female is dominant and larger with a longer cask, larger bill and brighter colored bare parts. As with other cassowaries, the northern cassowary is a shy and solitary bird. Their diet consists mainly of berries and small animals. They will eat dead animals when they find them. The young have been observed to eat the feces of the males raising them and clutch mates. In the breeding season, the polygamous female lays three to five green eggs on a well-camouflaged nest prepared by the male, she then leaves the nest and eggs to find another mate. The male incubates the eggs and raises the chicks alone for about nine months, 